Well, I think I've been putting it off long enough. It is finally time to rebuild this Marvel Schebler, Schnebler, Schneibler. <laughs> anyway, we got to rebuild this Marvel carburetor on this old international tractor. Stick around. Welcome back to this episode of Home Built Workshop. Today we're going to do a little bit of mechanical work. I got to rebuild the carburetor on this International 2400B. This tractor is very similar to the International 454 and 464 series of tractors. It's around that size. It does have the C157 gas engine. I'm not 100% sure of the exact year this was made. I think it was the mid to later 70s. Well, this old tractor is really nothing fancy. It's just an old international 2400 that we use around here, cleaning pens and doing different tasks around the place. This carburetor has been plugged up, I don't know how many times I've taken it apart, cleaned it out, but I've never had the proper gaskets and things to get this reassembled properly. Finally, we're gonna do that now. I've got the rebuild kit for this particular model. We gotta get this thing off of here. We're gonna tear it apart, clean it all out, and get it rebuilt. Now, as you can probably tell, this thing's covered in a ton of grease and grime. So before we start tearing this apart, I wanna get this cleaned up. I'm gonna use the pressure washer to spray this thing off, but to cut through this grease and grime that's caked on there, I'm gonna use some of my favorite degreaser in the entire world, Super Clean. I've been using this stuff for a long time, probably over 20 years. And if you stick around later on in the video, I got a really cool offer that my friends at Super Clean offered to you, the awesome viewers. Let's get this thing cleaned off. I'll start off using the handy spray bottle because it's really easy to get a nice stream and flood everything with degreaser. I also like the foaming cleaner because it clings to the surface and lets it really soak on there. Now we'll fire up the old trusty pressure washer, which hasn't been used in about six months, only to find that I have zero pressure. Oh boy. I guess we're gonna have to resort to the hose for this project. It's not quite the same as a pressure washer, but it'll get the job done thanks to the Super Clean. I'll put a link to the Super Clean website down in the description. You can check them out for yourself. Well, it's not quite as good as the pressure washer, but it's gonna have to do for now. Guess I gotta fix that pressure washer another day. Now that this thing's a little bit more degreased, I'm gonna start disconnecting things, starting with this choke cable. Let's get that out of the way. Well, that's not even tight. Who worked on this last? <laughs> I'll disconnect the fuel line. And now I can loosen these two bolts that hold the carburetor to the intake. There is one little bit of linkage back here that we need to disconnect, but really we'll be able to get to that a little easier once we pull this carburetor down. I know from past experience that this side is a little tricky, mainly because this loader frame is in the way. Now I'll see if I can pop this out of this little air boot. There we go. Now we should be able to get to this pin and disconnect this linkage in the back. There we go. There's our carburetor. So let's take this thing into the shop, take a look at it, and get it rebuilt. But first, I'm gonna shove a rag up in this intake to keep any critters out of there. I may not get this all done today, so I don't wanna take any chances. There, critters, stay out. Now we're ready to start tearing this thing apart, cleaning it up and putting it all back together. But before you do that, if you're working on a project like this, you need to make sure you have the proper replacement parts on hand. There's hundreds of different models of this carburetor. Hopefully your carburetor has the identification tag still intact. This one thankfully does. It has all the numbers on there that I need to order up the replacement kit which I have right here. Now I ordered my kit from Steiner Tractor, not a sponsor or anything, but sometimes it's helpful to know where you get parts from. And that's where I ordered these from. I used the numbers off the carburetor to look up the part numbers for this kit. This is what they're calling their economy kit. Now I know for a fact that this tractor runs pretty good as is, 
So I didn't really need to go with the full out all parts included kit. Really, I only really am concerned with replacing the gaskets and that's mostly what this is. There's a couple other pieces in here that we will use, but mainly I wanted to replace the gaskets and seals and the economy kit has all those parts that we're going to need. If you've seen me doing some of this kind of work before, you'll see that I am again working on an old towel. I like to do that because it helps keep some of the parts from rolling away. Let's start taking this apart. We're going to start off just by removing these fuel fittings. There's some plugs and stuff here that I want to get out of the way now. I believe that's supposed to have a screen on there. Looks like that's long since history. I'm taking these off really just so I can get in there. These are just plugs so I can get in there and clean out everything. I like to remove these first while the carburetor is still bolted together. For me, it's easier to hold on to. Sometimes these things can be pretty tight. This one looks like it's been removed with vice grips. In the past, we might have to resort to that again because it's wanting to strip that out. I might have to eventually find a replacement plug for that. This is not the proper way to remove this. Ugh. Next, I want to remove this idle jet here. Before I do, I want to slowly screw it in until it stops and I want to count the number of turns. That way I have a baseline setting when I reinstall this. I know the tractor was running pretty good where it's at, so I kind of want to start there. It's a half turn. It's one turn. About one and a quarter. So one and a quarter turns out will be my baseline when I start the tractor back up. Then I'll adjust it from there if need be. The couple plugs and things on the bottom I'm going to remove. There's a little jet in the bottom of this. We want to make sure we clean that. Yeah, a little bit of gunk on that. That's just a drain plug. And now let's pop this thing open. Now, since I've had this apart before, I'm pretty certain that these gaskets are not going to be stuck. And they're not. The gasket is torn, though, as you can see, and that's what prompted me to get this rebuild kit. I've never found any other issues in here other than a whole lot of dirt, but I mainly wanted to replace these gaskets. The bottom half of the carburetor really doesn't have any more parts. Now, there are some models where you would replace this tube. You can take that out. This is not removable. I see no evidence that it threads in there. So I'm not going to mess with that. We'll just make sure that we get all the passages cleaned out, try to get everything as clean as we can. This section, however, does have some more parts that we need to remove. First, we're going to get this flow out of the way. And that just has this little pin that pulls out. Then the float comes out. Then we can remove the needle. Let's go ahead and get this gasket out of the way. This guy here is the Venturi. We want to make sure that goes back into place once we're done. It is directional too, so make sure you pay attention which way it goes in. So I don't forget, I'm just going to leave it like that. There's a little jet here that we need to remove. Or not. That does not want to come out. Yeah, that does not want to come out. It looks completely fine. I do not want to risk damaging this. So I think I'm going to choose to leave this in. We'll just make sure that everything's nice and clean. We will take out the seat. These can sometimes be a little tricky because it's so wide. You just use something like a scraper or something like that that reaches all the way across. I don't have any screwdrivers that are that wide. There's a little gasket on here too that we'll need to replace. I do sort of wish I could get that jet out, but I'm looking at the kit and it does not come with a replacement for that particular one. So if I damage that, we got a problem. So that's another reason I'm leaving it in. Now I want to remove this throttle shaft there's nothing wrong with it and I've never noticed any leaking, but 
if we remove these two screws in here, pull that butterfly valve out of there, we should be able to pull this shaft off there and there's a little seal right here on the end that I want to change. There's a throttle blade. Now this. Come right out. There's a little seal that goes right in the end. Upon further inspection, I found that this carburetor had two rubber seals installed in this location. I'm not gonna worry about taking off the choke plate or anything like that. With the two halves ready to go, let's grab some carb cleaner, take this outside and start spraying away. When I'm spraying these down, I want to spray the cleaner in every single passageway from every different direction. I want to make sure that none of the passageways are plugged up and everything's flowing freely. I don't always know where each passage goes, but when I spray the carburetor cleaner into a passage, I do make sure that it comes out somewhere on the carburetor. Also, it's very important to wear safety glasses when you're doing this because sometimes it'll come out in a spot that you don't expect. And I can tell you from experience that you don't want to spray yourself in the eye with carburetor cleaner. Be safe, wear safety glasses. When I'm done with the carburetor cleaner, then I'm gonna use some compressed air and blow the entire thing out again. So let's grab our kit and put this Marvell Shoveler carburetor back together. See if we can get this thing running before the day's out. Did you see the video where I rebuilt the Holly carburetors? This kit is a lot simpler than that. Way less pieces. Looks like this does cover a couple different models. We'll have to compare, make sure we get the right gasket. That's our needle and seat. It's gonna go with those guys. I'm gonna start by installing the rubber seals for the throttle plate. These little rubber seals are kind of a cup shape. The way they were installed was the inner one was the cup facing up and the outer cup facing down. Now I've seen these installed several different ways and I'm not 100% sure which one is correct. I've seen them installed with a felt packing which this kit includes, but this carburetor did have two rubber seals already in there. So I'm going to choose to put the rubber seals back in. There's not really any special trick to install these, they just press into place. Just make sure if you use anything to press them in that you don't tear the seal. With the rubber seals in place, now I've seen in the past on other models where there's this little brass kind of outer seal that gets pressed in there. I don't know why this one doesn't have that. Maybe it's been apart before. I'm going to see if that fits in there. It looks like it'll fit. Yeah, I believe that is supposed to be on there. Now we can reinstall. Our throttle shaft. And our throttle blade, making sure the number stamped on the blade is up. Our kit has new screws, so we're gonna install those. I'm gonna put a little bit of low strength Loctite on here just to make sure that they can't back out and work their way into something that they shouldn't be. This can be a little bit tricky sometimes. reinstall our plug caps. I'm going to put the one that was installed with vice grips on the outside. That way I can easily get to that later when I'm able to get a replacement. We'll take a look at our gaskets here. Looks like that's the one we need. We can install our new seat. Now we've got the needle, which has this little clip. 
which clips onto the needle and then will clip onto the float like so. And now we'll just carefully slip the new needle down into the new seat and install the replacement pin to lock the float into place. There we go. When this is together, setting the float height, you can measure it. I usually just kind of eyeball it and make sure that the float is level with this portion of the carburetor. And it looks to me like it's just a little bit high. Using my calibrated icrometer, that looks about even to me. See what I did there? Icrometer. Yeah, get it? <laughs> now we'll jump over to this section. This will go on just like that, but first we need to make sure our Venturi is in there. Who caught that mistake? And gasket goes on this side. These things happen. There we go. Now we reinstall. When you're reassembling the two halves of the carburetor, you need to be very careful that you don't have the Venturi out of place. It is possible that if the Venturi is off to one side, you can actually pinch the Venturi between the two halves. So just make sure everything is perfectly aligned before you crank those screws down. Once I get it all screwed together, I usually carefully flip it back and forth. You should be able to hear the float and sometimes the Venturi both rattling around in there. This is just kind of a double check that I do just to make sure that nothing's bound up. And also I just discovered something. Just as a, a quick side note, I just discovered that that main nozzle that's in there at an angle that I didn't think you could remove, there are slots in here down through this hole where you could get in there with a screwdriver and thread that out. So I'm not gonna worry about that yet because everything was clear with the carburetor cleaner and the compressed air, but I just wanted to point that out. I did just notice that. Now we can take our idle adjustment screw, replace that. There's a little washer that goes on here as well. Little gasket, I guess. Slowly screw that in until it stops. And then we're going to back it out one and a quarter turns. Now onto this guy. He gets a new washer. Gasket. And lastly, our fuel fitting. I should have ordered a replacement of these because there's supposed to be a screen on here. For now, I'm just gonna reinstall this one. Our new gasket. And this thing is ready to go back on the tractor. So did you get all that? Really, it's not that hard. If you've never done this before, don't be afraid to try it. There's really not all that many pieces in there and it's just a matter of removing everything carefully, keeping track of your parts, cleaning everything up, making sure all the passages are open, and then replacing it with the new pieces where required. The rebuild kits do a great job. Usually there's a very nice exploded diagram included. I always try to keep these even after I'm done. I've got parts books around that I try to keep this kind of stuff in. Really helpful if, in case you forget which way something went. These diagrams are great. I'm gonna go put this thing back on the tractor and we'll see if it'll start up. You already saw me remove this thing, so I'm just gonna slap it on there, basically in reverse order of removal. While the other Jeff is out there putting the carburetor on the tractor, I wanted to talk to you guys about a cool offer from my friends at Super Clean. This video is sponsored by Super Clean and they've got a cool offer for one of you. If you leave a comment down below on this video and let me know what sort of greasy, grimy task you could use some Super Clean, we're gonna choose a winner and Super Clean will send you a sample pack including this spray bottle 
as well as a can of the foaming cleaner. Both are awesome products and I will probably be using them when I'm done to clean up this greasy workbench. Now I guess we do need to get a couple pieces of fine print cleared up here. This offer is only valid for those in the lower 48 of the United States. If you're outside of that area, I'm sorry, there's just shipping regulations and all that sort of thing that really makes it very difficult. But if you're in the lower 48, this definitely applies. Just leave a comment, let me know. Now this will only be valid for the next two weeks after this video goes live. So if you're watching this in the future and it's definitely two weeks after, you can look when the video went live and double check that just to make sure. So for the next two weeks, leave your comments. We'll choose a winner at the end of those two weeks. Someone is going to get a nice little sample pack of some Super Clean. I'd like to give a huge shout out and a big thank you to the folks over at Super Clean for not only making an awesome degreaser, but also being so willing to share with channels like myself so you guys can get some cool products as well. And if you're still watching this video now, I'd like to say thanks as well. I really appreciate you guys sticking around with me for this project. Speaking of sticking around, let's jump outside and see if this tractor will fire up. All right, let's see what happens. This did have to crank a little bit longer than normal. That's because it needed time to fill the fuel bowl of the carburetor. I never realized how much this sounds like a diesel. I can assure you it's not. I did find one small leak where I needed to tighten up one of the fittings on the carburetor. Well, that's it for this project. I'm glad to have this thing back together because, well, I've got some work to get done. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel because apparently we've got a pressure washer to fix very soon. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Poor pressure washer.